Hello everybody and welcome to another test of autopilot. This time we are running update 2019.16.3.2. It's becoming really silly with those uh, sub sub versions, but this is what we have. Uh, the major difference here is that in Belgium now navigate on autopilot is also enabled and I will do a separate test on that because I have several test cases or test scenarios that I want to try out. And uh, for now, let's first see if the new regulations that have been implemented in the 16.1 release are smoothed out and those uh, jerky movements are maybe gone and whether or not it can now again handle that uh, dreaded S-curve. So let's see. As usual, the first thing we try out is the hill crest. Again, what I already noticed is that the 14 second knack for holding your steering wheel is still here. So yeah, it's going to be more and more difficult to let the car do its thing without me intervening. But yeah, let's see how we can handle this. It's a little jerky movement on the steering wheel. It's not a lot, uh, but when I passed that intersection, it was hesitating to turn right uh, on the steering wheel. It's not a lot, it's hardly noticeable on the car, but yeah, when holding the steering wheel, you feel the little tugs there. So here again, top of the hill crest, no problem. At the bottom, yep, slight deviation to the left, really gradual, nothing to be alarmed about, but it is something that they should fix sooner or later. But there are more important things to fix on the autopilot first. Same here, top of the hill, no problem whatsoever. The intersection where it loses left and right lane markings. Let's see what the car does there, whether it's still going straight on. Yeah, no movement in the steering wheel whatsoever, so that's a good thing. If you want to do a lane change on this road, which is a secondary road, that is still disabled because of that new regulation from the uh, UN slash ECE 57, the one that we are trying to fight. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, unsuccessful at the moment. Um, it is supposed to be because of more safety and it is a regulation, it's not a law uh, at this point but Tesla is apparently not taking any chances and is adhering completely to that uh, regulation. Um, we should see if the other manufacturers are actually doing the same thing. Um, that would be a nice test to see if they comply as much as Tesla is complying right now, but they are taking it really strict at the moment. All right, the S-curve. Let's hope there are not any cars coming from the other side and Let's see if the car can handle this now. So here we go. No, it is, oh yeah, it is not beeping. It is saying prepare to take over. Okay, so that's an improvement again. So the car can actually handle that turn or that S-curve again. It's not as confident at this point. Uh, because it is still going over the line, but I'm going to try this again and see if we get the same result here. Second run. Let's see if it wasn't a fluke. And um, we are actually getting an improvement here. Hands on steering wheel. Let's see. It is going over the line. It is beeping, trying to get back into the line but it is still doing that, it is not stopping anymore. Same here, it is beeping, but it is not stopping anymore, and it is requesting me to put my hands on the steering wheel, so I was trying not to do anything and let the car handle it completely by itself, and it is definitely an improvement if you compare it to the uh, previous update, the 16.1. So yeah, that's good. Now I have navigate on autopilot enabled and uh, 
yeah I need to confirm the lane change so let's do that okay it is doing that okay and now I enable lane change to the right again lane goes right goes red sorry but the car still does it is that an improvement that's a good question now let's see if we get into another slower car okay we are approaching a car that is slower than me let's see what the car does I am in Mad Max mode by the way it is slowing down still slowing down a car is going to pass me I'm going to signal right now yep the lane is red and the auto lane change has cancelled again so even with the navigate on autopilot that uh, lane change does not happen now let's see if we do have enough room what the car will actually do um, well, whether it will suggest me going to the right yes or no okay going nope not enabling not enabling yep yeah, and it is cancelled the car was actually making room for me but it didn't do it so that really sucks still at this point okay so we need to take the exit here let's enable autopilot and see if it will take the exit for me it says I will have to take over in about 500 meters yeah it is taking that exit but it is going really fast it is braking it is braking okay auto steer limited yeah that's what we have with uh, our exits here in Belgium because most of the time they are really sharp and that might be the biggest problem that we face for uh, the autopilot but it did take the exit on its own let's see if it takes oh it's also taking the exit here nice and beeping of course because of the sharp turn and then it disabled so um, but yeah I'm looking forward to testing autopilot thoroughly on this one uh, I'll be doing that in the next couple of days so stay tuned for that uh, video but yeah I'm expecting a few glitches there because of the turning radius but besides that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what navigate on autopilot will bring for us Europeans and especially here in Belgium we have some tricky exits that are really short we have sharp turns on the exits so yeah a lot of things that can go wrong but hopefully Tesla has programmed the navigate on autopilot in such a way that it slows down enough to be able to handle that okay so you know the drill by now next up we have that lane shift let's hope we have a green light doesn't seem to be cars are braking so let's leave a little bit of room there okay a little bit more room for that truck to get up to speed I have no car behind me so that's okay okay let's try to get up to speed here oh all right let's see what it does I'm going to accelerate through it yep that is still as fluent as the previous update so that's still good okay so this section has two challenges one is the disappearing of the lane lines or the line markings and the second one is that those line markings are more to the center of the road so still in the center yeah right in the turn it is going to the right side it's not staying there it is more having more difficulties with staying on the right side of the lane than the 12.1 version that I tested the steer is wiggling the steering wheel is wiggling all over the place so yeah it's definitely not usable in those situations yet but that is to be expected now once again it's time for the conclusion on this update 
16.3.2 and besides the navigate on autopilot which I already mentioned I will do a separate extensive test on that here in Belgium um, I initially tried it out on this test so that was really the first time that I enabled it and it is really nice to see it taking the exit all on its own which brings the question why can it take the exit on its own but why do we still have to um, confirm the lane change uh, on the highway if if that is uh, eliminated and it can do the unconfirmed or unassisted lane change then the problem is basically solved with the stupid rule about the lane change having to happen within five seconds of getting the blinker or turning the blinker on. Uh, because then the Tesla will automatically determine when to turn the blinker on and that way it uh, basically circumvents the, uh, the, the problem or the issue um, that we have here. But other than that, the S-curve, it can take it again now more or less you still have to hold the steering wheel and uh, correct a little bit so it needs your input it needs your assistance or your uh, presence detected in order to do it otherwise it will still start to beep uh, at you because of again that new regulation that the steering wheel can only turn so many degrees and you can only have that many uh, lateral g-forces uh, applied to the car um, other than that the uh, last section that I tested, so the new part in my tests, uh, the steering wheel is jiggling all over the place and it's, it doesn't feel secure at that point, but still it is mainly geared towards highway driving and uh, yeah, this is really an exceptional situation, especially with the lines not being uh, on the side of the road, but it's a parking area which is a little bit in the road. Uh, so that makes it a really hard thing for autopilot to do correctly and that's also the reason why I included it in this test. Um, other than that, so you still have the NAC, the 40 second NAC, you still have the 5 second lane change thing. Um, those are the new regulations and I don't think we're going to get around it uh, easily. Um, but besides that, I think this update has improved a little bit again over the 16.1 update that I tested before. Now with the 16.1 release I told you guys don't install it um, but right now I'm seeing enough improvements and of course if you're living in Belgium you're now getting the navigate on autopilot which is an additional benefit and I think that that is enough to say okay if you can live with the 14 second nag and if you can live with the fact that you have that five second rule for the lane change then I'd say install the update because the benefits outweigh the downsides on this one. As usual if you like my videos please subscribe using that button down there and uh, don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos and for now thanks for watching and I see you guys in the next video about the navigate on autopilot testing. Bye bye!